What's up, Internet? It's your soul. And someone just pointed me to a picture of Greta Thunberg. I'm totally butchering her name. I know that's not even remotely how it sounds in Swedish. But anyway, the, the young girl, teenager who crossed the Atlantic on a boat and has been uh, heavily promoted in the mainstream media regarding her message on climate change and environmental activism and so on. And I'll show you the person that they compared her to visibly, facially, in a moment. And it's quite interesting. But this brought me to a topic that I've covered in the past before for very specific reasons, which is essentially people in the present day who look very much like people from the past that we have artwork of. And having just looked up this topic a bit online, I've seen that pretty much every case I've seen discuss this involves people saying, oh, this person's a time traveller or something like that. You know, Michael Jackson's a time traveller because he looks like this person from the past. Well, no, that doesn't have to be the case at all. Obviously, people will then say, generally, well, obviously, like, ironically, obviously, obviously, people can't just look like someone else. Meaning, you know, these are completely different people. They're not time travellers. They're just people who look the same throughout time. And obviously that's possible. However, I want to show you some examples here of what may be going on as an alternative in some cases, uh, which is basically reincarnation. And there are many examples of uh, reincarnation being demonstrated through evidence. And I myself have remembered some of my own past lives, so I happen to know definitely that it's a real thing. Um, I can't tell you exactly whether any particular person is the reincarnation of someone else or not. Sometimes I get strong intuition about these subjects that turn out to be useful and that I would suggest is good evidence. I can find good evidence that certain people I can highlight are potentially reincarnations of some people, but it doesn't mean so I can necessarily prove it, even to myself in every case. Uh, but, you know, it's just an interesting thing to look at for me. And I'm just going to go through some examples here. and. Yeah, some of these are quite mind-blowing. So as you can see, we're looking here at a picture of Michael Jackson with this bust from ancient Egypt. And, you know, interestingly, his nose, uh, in a way, matches. You know, he had a lot of problems with his nose structure. And obviously, the picture on the left, the nose is worn away or broken off. We can see visually, there's a lot of similarity in many different ways between the face there on the left and the one on the right. You know, does that mean that this was a picture of Michael Jackson as he was back in ancient Egypt? Who knows? I don't know, but, you know, it seems like they're fairly similar. Here's a really amazing one, uh, Eddie Murphy. I mean, if this guy on the right here walked into a room dressed in modern clothing, or even in the old clothing, most people who have seen Eddie Murphy would think it was Eddie Murphy. I mean, it's amazingly similar. You know, the ears are a bit smaller, um, moustache is slightly different shape, but and he's a bit skinnier, maybe. But generally speaking, the features, eyebrows, face are almost identical. Uh, you know, that I find stunning, actually. And I would not be surprised at all if this actually was a reincarnation case. Reincarnation, if you think about it, is not really so strange. Uh, I mean, people don't necessarily understand how they came to be human. They just know they're on this planet. That in itself is a bit odd, don't you think, that that you exist and yet you don't know how you came to exist or how you came to be here. Um, and there's all these people being born and dying, and yet the people themselves, the personalities, seem to uh, just come from nowhere and disappear to nowhere. Well, that isn't what's happening, basically. <laughs> um, the spiritual component of yourself, the light form of yourself, ultimately, the high frequency part, pulls out of the body at death and returns to the high frequency realms, higher dimensional energetic realms. Uh, and that's basically the light at the end of the tunnel that people see when they have near-death experiences. That's the higher frequency, it's the light. So that part can then reincarnate, be reborn again into another human vehicle at another time if it chooses. So the issue is, when that happens, which is happening constantly, is it possible for facial features to move along with the being as it reincarnates? And I would say yes, but you know I don't have a lot of... Um, I don't have all the fine details recorded, let's say, that I can share that can actually prove that in a way that people can go away and measure. But I would say just through experience of having looked at this, I think that's true. And 
uh, you know, the, the form of the human body changes in relation to the consciousness of the being inhabiting it, ultimately, uh, to some extent. Here's one of Vladimir Putin. You can see, I mean, again, almost identical. This, these two characters are, are younger than he is in this picture, but, um, you know, this is World War One, I, I presume, right that era, uh, and World War Two era. And you can see this face in all three is very, very, very similar. Now, you know, obviously that doesn't mean to say that this is the same spirit reincarnating. It could just be, again, that people look very similar, but, uh, you know, quite amazingly similar. I've never been to Russia, so I don't know how common this face is. You do go to parts of the world where people look similar. You know, there's, you'll see many people who look somewhat similar, but ultimately that's because they're very closely related genetically and thus, therefore, through their essence as well. Um, just an interesting picture, really, I guess. This is another one which can't possibly be a reincarnation because uh, Donald G. Trump, or John G. Trump, sorry, Donald Trump's uncle, uh, was alive whilst Julian Assange was alive. But interesting that you can overlay their faces and they're almost exactly the same. And someone comments here, you know, I don't look much like my father and my brother. How can these two people look so similar? You know, it's an interesting question, isn't it? And it doesn't mean to say they're reincarnations, but is there something more going on? It's hard to say. On the surface, you've got to really dig deeply to understand how these people came to be where they are and who they are. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, answer that for you. It's just a, a question. Uh, so here's one that I came up with, and, you know, this is interesting to me because I didn't come to this through looking at Bertrand Russell's face and then thinking, well, he looks like Russell Brown. I've, I don't think I'd ever seen Bertrand Russell's face. This actually came to me while I was meditating on reincarnation, and my own guide, let's say, in spirit, my own spirit, higher self, basically said, Bertrand Russell, go and look, kind of thing. So, oh, okay. Uh, interesting. Bertrand Russell, Russell Brand, Bertrand Brand, very similar names. And this is a pattern that I have seen when there are cases of people who are fairly clear are re genuine reincarnations of some people. There tends to be more than just a similar similar appearance. There tends to be other patterns that match as well, uh, such as similar life choices or similar names even. And in this case, this is quite an amazing one because you know when you overlay this this one in the middle is an overlay of uh, a blending of the two people's faces. You can see they are very similar facially. I mean, there's you could overlay his face over many people's faces and there wouldn't be as much of a match as there is with Bertrand Russell's. Obviously, the name is very similar, but there's also very key connections in their life as well, which is that, for example, they were both members of the Fabian Society, which founded the Labour Party in the UK. And the Fabian Society has its famous logo of a wolf in sheep's clothing, basically because their mission involves them consciously and deliberately misleading people in order to achieve an objective. And that's partially why I was looking into Russell Brand. Uh, I will go into it a little bit. Basically, it's just because he very clearly, for many different reasons, as this so-called hero and leader of the spiritual movement in modern Britain, or the world even, uh, is very clearly at the same time misleading people in very obvious ways, if you actually think of it like that and look into it deeply beyond the surface. That's why I was looking into it. And Bertrand Russell, you know, he seems to be a character. I've never read any of his books, to be, of his books, to be fair, so you know, don't take my word for it. But from what I do gather, uh, he seemed to be somewhat of a hero to some people and yet would say things in some of his writing, apparently along the lines of, you know, we need to kill most people on the planet and things like that. So a bit of a mixed bag, you could say, and I would say exactly the same thing about Russell Brand as well. Uh, so, yeah, that I found that interesting. Here's another one from the internet. I didn't find this. Uh, Nicholas Cage and some character from the past. Very similar again, aren't they? So, uh, you know, I'm not going to comment on that. I don't know anything about these people. Uh, well, I don't know anything about the, the car on the right anyway. I can't really comment. But... So this brings us on to Greta, which is why I'm making this video, why I even was thinking about this today. Someone pointed out that she looks a lot like Madame Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky, who was the head of the Theosophical Society, basically in a sort of a cult esoteric group that had a lot of power, uh, I believe, in the last century. And yeah, I mean, visually speaking, very similar faces. I've got another mock up here that I made from another picture. Uh, just basically, what I'm doing is going through looking at pictures of Blavatsky and trying to find one where the positioning of the head matches the positioning of the head of the other person that I can. Of the pictures I have. So, yeah, I mean, visually, if you overlay these faces, they match almost perfectly. Um, same as with the other ones. And I just find that interesting. So, you know, people actually already commented, wow, this is Blavatsky reincarnated. And I, again, I don't know that for sure, but 
I do find it interesting that we have these two people who have gone out and tried to create social change on a large scale, uh, and um, Greta obviously doing that at a young age. Um, you know, it's quite unusual, obviously, and that's partially why the media's picked up on it. I think if you were somebody like Helena Blavatsky, who was empowered in metaphysical ways, let's say, would have been very consciously able to reincarnate to a particular body with a particular objective. Um, that was literally a big part of her work and her um, specialization was that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you came back and you were on this mission to change the world, which she was, then sure, you would be very active at a young age, wouldn't you, if you were conscious enough? I'm not saying that this is really what's happening. I'm not saying, even if it is really what's happening, I'm not saying that Greta is even consciously aware of it, but I do find it interesting and, and worth looking at, you know. If you happen to be from Sweden, that part of the world, you know, you know how the common faces are. Maybe you can find 100,000 faces of people that look very similar to Blavatsky as well. I'm not sure. She was actually born in Russia, as I understand it. So, uh, you know, but I don't remember seeing a huge number of people that share those sorts of features in that alignment. So I just thought I'd pass that on. Um, this is another interesting one, particularly since Boris Johnson is now the UK Prime Minister. I made this years ago before he was Prime Minister. And this was another one which I got the intuition from Spirit from. Uh, basically, Emperor Nero, and this is very interesting. You've got these two busts here of Emperor Nero, visually looking very, very similar to Boris. The kind of outlandish hairstyle, but particularly the nose, the lips, and the eyes are almost identical, and they're quite unusual. I mean, even the angle of the nose is the same. You don't see many. I don't hardly ever see people with features like that. And there you go. They're almost a complete match. The jawline, lips. I mean, uh, remarkably similar, uh, and. You know, I found that very intriguing, and I personally think he is that reincarnation. And if you look into Emperor Nero's life, it was said that he um, basically was made emperor deliberately because uh, I believe it was his uncle or someone like that who knew he was incompetent would, would put him there to deliberately ruin the empire. And, you know, I would say that's possibly why Horace got chosen as well, but, you know, I <laughs> uh, can't say too much about that because I don't really know. But the very interesting thing about this is that if you search in Google, for Boris Johnson and Emperor Nero, you'll find a long list of pages where people from, for years have been comparing Boris Johnson to Emperor Nero just through his actions. Not even once mentioning that he looks like him, but saying that his actions, its some of them are joking and some of them are serious, basically saying his approach to kind of uh, stirring up the population through uh, certain political activities and uh, gestures and um, outlandish behaviour, that kind of thing, uh, reminded them of Emperor Nero. And, you know, other people have compared him to Emperor Nero for other reasons as well. And I just was astonished when I saw how similar they looked. I think this is a very good candidate for a genuine reincarnation, personally. So we go back to the start. There's there's quite a lot more of these around you can find online, but I've just picked out some of the ones that I've saved over the years. And, uh, yeah, I'm particularly interested to hear your thoughts on this. Um, you know, the, I know that uh, the Dark Journalist and other people have put in a huge amount of research into Blavatsky. Uh, because of the Theosophical Society's connections to modern-day um, groups. In fact, John G. Trump, I believe, was connected by dark journalist to the Theosophical Society. So that's Trump's uncle, basically, this guy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend going and listening to dark journalists as well on this subject. He's put out a ridiculous amount of content on this. I mean, it's, I would say, probably over 500 hours of video material on this general subject. Not not reincarnation specifically, but on the subject of the kind of occult groups in the last 200 years and how they relate to the modern world and have been running things from behind the scenes for a long time. Very, very interesting. Definitely worth listening to. Uh, and, you know, yeah, they're very much into paranormal subjects. And you'll see when you see the Jeffrey Epstein map that I've made, uh, there's ties in there between Jeffrey Epstein and people like Trump and that those, you know, most of the people in the top levels of American government can be connected through to groups like Scientology and even Aster Crowley and, and people of that nature within one or two leaps fairly quickly because they're so tied in, whether deliberately or not. I'm not saying everyone in the US government is a Scientologist or has anything to do with those groups or would want anything to do with them. I'm just saying that those groups have very direct connections to the power structure at key points so that they can reach pretty much anyone without too much difficulty so always interesting to pay attention to this stuff and uh, you know maybe one day it'll become more useful than a curiosity <laughs> 
So anyway, if you've enjoyed this material and uh, you want to see more interesting dots being connected beyond the normal mainstream narrative, then please do subscribe to my work here on wherever you find me. Steam it, Steam, Eureka, uh, Minds.com, YouTube, Twitter. And by all means, please do give me a, a thumbs up if you've liked like this. Give me an upvote and a share and a re-steam. And if you're on YouTube, please hit the notification bell to get full notifications for future content. And uh, leave me a comment below if you have liked what you've seen, or even if you don't like what you see. If you've got something you want to just let me know in the world, then definitely go ahead and do that. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.